Good morning. Welcome to Made by Me with Grave Roots. So glad you could join us today. We're going to do a little bit of housekeeping before we jump in to the actual activity and get to shrink some shrink art. But my name is Laura. I'm the programs coordinator here at Grave Roots Museum and Archives. When we are doing the live version of this, please remember to keep your cameras muted and your microphones. If you have any questions, you can enter them into the chat. And if you're watching the recorded version of this and have any questions, please feel free to reach out. So today is all about rock and photo stands. So these ones, uh, this activity is actually from adapted from Buggy and Buddy um, blog online. And it was very interesting because obviously Great County, we have a lot of rocks in our area and a lot of us do take a lot of pictures, but we don't always have photo frames. So I like this activity because it gives you a lot more freedom as to what you can display because you can even display something on both sides of your rock and photo frame and actually personalize it. So I will talk a bit more about that later on. So when you are working with the shrink art plastic, you can choose to um, roughen it up with a bit of sandpaper. Um, with my example today, I didn't um, do anything with sandpaper. And so I kind of wanted to freeform it. So I just colored it all up with pencil crayon. And then I added some black permanent marker on top to add some shape. And then I'm just going to cut it up every to make some unique shapes and cut some holes in it to add to the photo stand. Um, because if we can see these little pieces, these are little pieces of shrink art. And for this example, I chose items that if I put like a picture of my kids in it would relate to them. So like they enjoy mint chip ice cream. They like big tractors their initials, and then some of their favorite colors, and then of course a heart, because you know, you gotta love the kids. And so I just added those. I didn't add any beads, but in your kit, you will have found some wooden beads that you can add to your photo stand um, along with the shrink art. If you have anything else around your house that you wanna add, you could add buttons, you could add like little parts of keychains, whatever kind of suits what images you think you will put in your photo stand or the person you might be gifting this to. So once you have all of your shrink art ready um, to go, you can just cut it out into whatever shape. So you've got a half sheet of um, the shrink art. Now, previously we did the the pollinator mobile and I had some leftover scraps for that. So I even decorated that just with the Sharpie markers and then it's just going to create something strange. So I want to see what that turns into, but you can create your shapes into whatever shape you want. Like that's the beauty of shrink art and just to optimize usage, I'm just going to cut it into different shapes starting, I think, flower, but all you do is just cut it with some scissors. And what I want to do is also keep in mind that I want to, I need to put a hole somewhere. So I'm just going to use a single hole punch, but you can also use like a three hole punch. Um, that's all I had at my house that would work. Um, and then put that onto the tray. Part of the experience when I was testing this out because um, it had been a little bit since I had done um, shrink art or shrinky dinks, whatever you call them. I had tried um, just poking through like with a barbecue skewer because I was like, oh, well, it'll make a hole. It'll be fine. Um, this is one of the pieces that I did with a barbecue skewer, like right there. And the hole's not big enough to use. So it does make a nice little interesting um, monarch ornament that I can just set down somewhere. So the bigger the hole, the better. So if you don't have a hole punch, you could always look into finding a larger um, screwdriver or something like that. Just make sure you make it bigger, definitely bigger than 
a barbecue skewer. So I'm just gonna cut out a few more because when we do the oven tray to shrink the shrinky dinks or the shrink art, you wanna make sure that the pieces are not touching. Um, there's a lot that you can do with shrink art. And so you could layer things, but at this point we don't need to do that. Um, I'll do another one over here. And it's just fun to see how they're going to shrink. So I gotta make sure I just have those holes. And I'm gonna add one more, this one. You wanna make sure it's not completely close to the edge, but you can get fairly close because as it shrinks, it is gonna make it pretty strong and it won't have an issue um, going onto the wire. So now that I have these all ready, we are going to put them in the oven in just a little bit. But first, uh, because of you know displaying photographs and things like that, we wanted to share some information from our archives here at Grey Roots. And so Jillian, one of the engagement summer staff who has formerly been an archive summer student, she is going to talk about some interesting things about preserving your own um, pieces of family history. So we're going to go visit Jillian in the archives now. Hi, I'm Jillian Wagner and I'm a summer engagement student here at Brave Roots Museum and Archives. Today I'm joining you from the reading room where we're going to be looking at some items from the archives and learning about how to better preserve your family history. Here in front of me I have some items from the McFall collection. This collection features letters, photographs, and other memorabilia from around the time of the First World War. Because this collection has a range of historical documents, it's a great place to find examples of different types of archival preservation. As we explore this collection, I'm going to share with you four important tips to remember when preserving your own family's history. One of the most important rules in archival preservation is something we're all familiar with. When preserving historical documents, clean hands are a must. Our hands produce natural oils which can be damaging to documents when handled repeatedly. To ensure a long life for your family documents and photographs, wash your hands with soap and water or put on cotton or latex gloves before handling them. Another good tip for preserving your family history involves storage. Historical documents can be damaged by environmental factors such as light, humidity, and temperature. In the archives, we use cardboard storage boxes like this to house our collections. These are great for storing letters and photographs, which we keep in acid-free envelopes for better preservation and organization. Before storage, we make sure to remove any metal pieces, like staples, to avoid rust damage and replace them with plastic clips. Larger documents, such as this memorial piece, are sealed using a clear plastic called mylar to keep them safe from the elements. There's nothing more frustrating to anyone interested in family history than not knowing who the people are in old photographs. Another tip for preservation is documentation. When possible, write down information about your family documents. You can ask family, friends, and professional archivists to help. Names, dates, and locations are good places to start. Here at the museum, we label our documents to give more information about each item. These labels are placed on the outside of boxes, envelopes, and on mylar casings, not directly on the documents, to avoid damaging them. If you do need to add a note or label directly, write lightly on the back in pencil. One final tip for historical preservation is digitization. Handling historical documents over and over again can be damaging, even when wearing gloves. Before storing your documents and photographs, consider scanning or taking pictures of them first. This way, you'll be able to look at them as much as you'd like without worrying about wear and tear, and will be able to share them more easily with friends and family. I hope you've enjoyed learning about different preservation tips for your family history. For more information, contact the archives here at Grey Roots or visit us online at greyroots.com. Perfect, that was very good information from Jillian. Now we're gonna open up our little portable oven and stick our sheet of shrink art in. So I have the oven set to 300 degrees and so all I'm gonna do is wait and see. It's gonna to start to make the shapes kind of roll up. And then it's when they relax back down after they've shrunk that I will take them out. So 
This is always the fun part. So just make sure you're being safe when you're watching this. Don't get too close to the oven and make sure it's someone who's allowed to use the oven, who's going to use the oven mitt to open it up and check on the pieces. So now it's like watching a pot boil. And see, we got some curl happening now. So it's that larger piece with the flowers that's starting to shrink up, all the other pieces. So again, don't get worried when it starts to make those different shapes. Once it shrinks down, it'll flatten out again and then the shapes will be perfect. I mean, if you want to take it out while it's still kind of all like this, you could totally do that. Um, they will be a bit bigger. But we'll just wait a little bit longer. That one kind of flipped over. And it's always interesting to see because the colors will tighten up. So even if you think, oh, I didn't really color something in well, it when it shrinks down, it definitely changes what the colors are just because of the shrinking. Oh, that one really flipped over. So just a little bit longer, you can see they're starting to relax again. And if there are any pieces that still have a little bit of shape with them, um, sometimes I've carefully pushed them down while wearing the oven mitt. But it looks like we're so close. So I don't want to pull them out too early. You can put them back in if you pull them out too early, but that's that back one. My oddly shaped scrap one definitely um, is very interesting. Okay, so this is one of those situations where I am gonna push down that one in the back. So I'm gonna open the door carefully and then carry it back over. And then I'm just going to push it down a bit and actually try and flip it over. Perfect. So yeah, so now I'm gonna let those cool and work on the next step. So very first step in your instructions was to clean your rock. So mine's already clean. Um, so all I'm gonna do is figure out which side do I want to go up. I think I like you can also look at it which side sits down best. So that one's way better. All right, so now that I know which one my bottom is going to be, I want to think about how do I want the wire to go. Um, so like for my example one, I just wrapped it around and then secured it at the bottom and then just kind of squiggled it up. Um, I think I want to do something a little bit different. So I'm just going to take the wire and this wire is aluminum. So it's actually very flexible and forgiving. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find kind of a good spot where the wire is going to comfortably sit. And then I'm going to try to do it as tight as possible. Do a twist. While squeezing. So you might need another set of hands to help you with this part. And then before I go further, I want to make sure I'm sitting okay. No. I need to do it just a little bit tighter. Okay. And there I go. So now that I have that, I think I'm going to have this one come up and be what holds the photograph. So to make kind of like the spiral, I've used a marker before. So I can just use the marker to kind of twist it. And then I'm gonna twist it around again so that I can get the photo in between. 
and then oh, when things cooperate, there we go. So then I have this when I have my picture, and I can just squish it in there, and then it'll stay up perfectly. And because I have this extra piece here, I could use my beads, I can use the shrink art. So now that it's cool enough to touch, so there's like the one that's a flower, I can send it onto there. And then I could add some beads. Another little flower. And then maybe I twist it around. And then I can set it on the other side and add some more. So you can create this to be however you want, to make it look however you want. You don't even have to use all of the wire. We gave you a good amount of wire, so do what you want with it. Um, it's really easy to cut with the wire cutters, um, but always make sure you have an adult and that you ask permission before you use the tools. So um, that is kind of the rockin' photo stand. I hope that you learned a lot from Jillian visiting her in the archives and that you have a really great experience creating your rock and photo stand. And I'm just gonna look and see if we have any, we have no questions. Um, but again, if you have any questions or anything comes up, please don't hesitate to get in touch. And we hope you have a really great day. So thank you for joining us on watching Made By Me with Grey Roots. And don't forget, when you're done your creation, you can send an email to us with some pictures, or if you post it online, just tag us at hashtag MBM Grey Roots or Made by Me Grey Roots. So thank you again and have a great day.